Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by PewSitter.com, your online Catholic newspaper for the third millennium. CatholicMediaCoalition.org, in line with the church, online with the world. And TheAmericanCatholic.com, politics and culture from a Catholic perspective. Hello and welcome to today's edition of Catholic News Roundup. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Communist occupation. The Communist Party is receiving a warm welcome in Chicago as the Occupy Wall Street mob of 3,000 listened to an address from a communist spokesperson answering with cheers and thunderous applause. John Bochtel of the Communist Party USA told the crowd, quote, We will be with this movement till we make all the changes that we know we have to make. This movement is part and parcel in the great tradition in this country of people-powered democracy. This is the next big step of the democratic, democratic revolution in our country, end quote. Barack Obama, who plans on using the Occupy Wall Street movement as a central part of his re-election strategy, does so after Sam Webb, chairman of the Communist Party, publicly endorsed Obama and the Democrats in August for the 2012 presidential election. You can see video and read more about the communist presence in the Occupy Chicago movement on our resource page by clicking the link right outside the screen. Meanwhile, the movement continues its rampage, exploding out of control in the Eternal City with Roman riots. The Vatican is condemning disastrous riots in Rome's streets after an offshoot of the, of the Occupy movement calling themselves the indigent attacked a church nearby St. John Lateran Square where TheBlaze.com reports most of the destruction took place. Inquirer News says rioters tore a crucifix from the wall and smashed one of the church's statues of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the street, while protesters clad in black with their faces covered destroyed ATMs and broke windows in other buildings while throwing incendiary devices at police and assaulting news crews as well. Rome's mayor says it was, will take 1.4 million euros to recover from the damage wrought by the protesters. You can read more about the damage to the church and the riots on our resource page by clicking the link right over here. Defunding the United Nations. Republicans in the House are going after the UN again, this time by advancing legislation to pull back America's funding for the international organization. Cybernet News Service reports the House Foreign Relations Committee advanced the UN Transparency, Accountability, and Reform Act in the House by a 23 to 15 vote, which proponents say would allow America and other member states to fund only activities and agencies related to the national interest. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton threatens to ask Obama to veto the bill if it passes in the Senate, though American taxpayer dollars account for 22% of the UN's regular operating budget and 27% of its peacekeeping budget. You may also remember the committee recently advanced a bill to defund the UN Population Fund, which reportedly supports China's population control efforts. To read more about this most recent legislation regarding the UN on our resource page, just click on the link right outside the screen. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by NewOxfordReview.org, the voice of Catholic Orthodoxy, in print and on the web. And RenewAmerica.com, expanding the influence of America's grassroots in the cause of freedom. Homeschooling hostage. A family in Sweden continues to fight for the custody of their son, taken away from them by the state in 2009 because they were homeschooling him. OneNewsNow.com says Dominic Johansson was forcibly taken by police from his parents amidst claims that the couple were neglecting and isolating their son by homeschooling him. The Alliance Defense Fund is confident in their case against Sweden now that the European Court of Human Rights will actually hear the case, saying that the family is being discriminated against because they wish to exercise their rights as Christians and instill those values by educating their son at home. Dominic has been forbidden from seeing his parents since he was forcibly taken from his home by the state almost two years ago. Meanwhile, Big Brother government in America is also denying family rights and keeping families separated, coercing Chloe. A 15-year-old girl is being prevented by the state of Illinois from returning to her parents, now 34 weeks pregnant, after being repeatedly raped by gang members while under government supervision. 
The Department of Children and Family Service manipulated Chloe Faulkner at age 13 to decide not to go back home to her parents after she rebelliously ran away several times and when she changed her mind, refused to let her be reunited with her family. Illinois law allows runaway children over age 12 to decide whether or not they go back to their parents or become so-called, quote, wards of the state. Chloe has been kept from her family since 2009, while her parents continue to fight to get her back. You can read more about the Faulkner's fight to get their daughter back on our resource page by clicking the link right over here. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure and tune in tomorrow for your daily dose of Catholic News Roundup right here on realcatholictv.com. And be sure to check out The Vortex today where Michael talks about the Whore of Babylon. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tell all your friends about us. And as always, God bless you.